this was silly. Um, welcome to Silly Friday, uh, Fluent Friday, really, with me, Kirsten Cable from fluentlanguage.co.uk, and I am here to give you a bit of a shot of language learning, nerdery, motivation, just get excited, you know, let's, let's talk about language learning. I'm here in the um, exciting fluent attic as always. I don't want you to miss out on all this, um, all these amazing books. Um, okay, so as always, I hope you're tuning in live and I'm here to just give you a little bit of guidance and perhaps some tips from my own experiences um, coaching language learners and also being a language learner and writing, uh, exploring the world of language learning, um, language acquisition, but really language learning, motivation, what keeps us going, what gets us there, what does it take to speak another language, you know, why do people want to speak other languages? Um, but today, let's assume you know why you're here and you know why you're doing this, and I am going to cover um, a very special topic, which is when you are learning at a more advanced level. So this is really about going from the let's say intermediate, the, the B's, if you're thinking about it in the, not the birds and the bees, but the level letter B, if the B's and the C level, and this is all about going from that point where you are closer and closer and closer in levels of expertise, um, where you really can, you know, easily launch into conversations it's not really about that barrier anymore it's really about well I'm pretty good but but how do I get pretty gooder you know how do I get better and better and better um, until you're at the point where maybe like me um, meine Muttersprache ist eigentlich Deutsch ich komme aus Deutschland and I've only been learning English since I was 10 and now I'm it's 24 years late so I'm 34 years old and I speak English at an at a native-like level, I write English, I communicate in English and live my life through this. So every kind of standard hallmark of a bilingual person would roughly be fulfilled. It's entirely possible. Um, I also speak French, also at an advanced level. Um, mais pas si bien, pas si bien du tout, du, du tout. I don't speak French anywhere near as well. But in terms of my background in education, my degree is in English and in French. So this is an interesting uh, comparison, which I will be drawing on as I'm telling you about getting better. All right, well, that should have been a bit of time for you to get comfy, tune in, grab your cup of tea, and let's get started. Okay, so when we are thinking about getting from levels B to C, that's how I will be framing this. So this is really about the European framework of um, reference, the e CEFR that I very often refer to, but if you're a, an American learner, you might want to think about it in terms of the F FSI scale. So this is really when we're looking at going to the fours and fives on the FSI scale. Um, often the questions that we ask ourselves are sort of process questions on like, um, well, it's process and progress that we wonder about in language learning. Process is about how can I get better? What are the next steps that I need to take? Like, what is the master plan? Which, where is the checklist um, of things that I need to really tick off? And the progress question is about how how fast can I get there? Where am I? You know, like if if language learning is a is a road, um, how far am I down that road until I get to the destination? And often we think of level C two. Um, or level five FSI as the destination. Um, and I wonder if that always is the destination because I have long reached that level. I remember coming to the UK in 2001 um, and I took the IELTS test, which is the test of English as a, as a second language. And that test, I passed it on level nine, which is about as high as you're going to get. So for all intents and purposes on exams, I was like finished. Um, but I was not finished. So bearing in mind all these things, destinations, very interesting things. So I just wanted to frame it in progress and process. That's kind of how we often think about this. Um, now, I have got a few steps for you, which is sort of step one, step two, and step three, that I think will really make you better. And step number one, you 
are a person who has already kind of got the language foundations down so you don't really need a book like um like say this this asimil starter kit which is all about like oh you know let's you know let's teach you how to have a conversation in a foreign language here's a cd you know all these kind of um very specific uh big beginner things like how do i how do i get going uh, you don't really you're not really looking for this anymore you're a person who is actually capable of having that conversation you're just not feeling quite that comfortable yet and you're wondering how to get better so i think this is the po this is the time where you can safely step away from the kind of rosetta stones of this world and the kind of teach yourselves you know those sort of those those things that are aimed at starters and really just leave them behind and go okay i'm done with that i'm done with that i'm cool what's next um and what is next is in my mind is that you should be really targeted so propose some some goals and really think about the purpose so this is when you start thinking about what is it specifically that i want to do with this language not forever but a good way of framing it in my mind is what am i going to do next in this language and what do i want to do say in a year do I want to study in a foreign country? Do I want to get a job where I speak this language? Do I want to impress family? Do I want to go traveling? Like, what is it that you want to be able to do? And don't feel like any of your goals are too frivolous. I think any goal is awesome, right? So if your goal, like my goal for speaking Welsh is, you know, all of my Welsh speaking goals are kind of silly because I'm not going to make this part of my career or family or whatever. But um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So it's really about what you want to do. So if you feel like I want to discuss philosophy in a cafe in Paris while eating a croissant, go for it. I think that is awesome. But what this gives you is kind of a bit more direction. So you've you've done your your broad language learning, which got you to this intermediate level that you're at. And now you focus and you become a little bit more targeted. Um, you can be targeted by topic which is what I just described, or you can be targeted um, skills wise um, and really with a specific goal in mind in terms of an exam. So this is then just a case of not wanting to train all of your core skills, but really looking at which one's weaker and training that one in particular. And you may find that there isn't a core skill that you feel is weak, you're just feeling a bit weaker overall. Um, and then you, you're kind of focusing on vocab and really just drilling in the vocab but the key at this stage is to start using your language in the way that you envisage so that's number one target number two and i think this is crucial absolutely crucial step number two is culture that's kind of my overall thing language once you want to go from intermediate to advanced language is not just language anymore it isn't just language anymore this is not good enough if if all you want is to just become technically good i i would highly doubt it you really in order to make in, develop a higher understanding a higher connection with the language you're speaking you need to start really getting into the people who speak it into their world and just like become really curious and i i think this is why i like being so intense and not picking up lots of new languages this is why i like really sticking with one because it gets me to that point where i can start experiencing the world through other people's eyes and it's just so encouraging and awesome so really like you just want to have as much natural speed natural input as possible around you but you don't have to like sit and focus it and kind of think of it as like this learning process just make it more about what you're experiencing and make it more about what you're learning i think at this stage it's also important to learn the history of your target language country you know not study it but you know just be aware of like what makes them them to understand german i think it helps to understand germans to understand french i think it helps to understand the french or the canadians the austrians this way you know you get my drift um i think it really really helps it makes you more curious and it automatically opens up conversations about topics that you never thought possible and as you're looking for native input you're going to realize that you're going to start understanding the language in a context that you have never had before so new doors open up at intermediate level once you start being curious about the target language culture if that's what you want to call it so you have to do more than language at this stage and number three 
um, I was thinking about this. I was thinking about the level C2 and the, the kind of high level of achievement and this kind of near native desire that we have, right? This, this desire that you envisage. And really step number three, I don't know how else to put this, my top tip, um, and I never tell this to beginners, I never tell this to beginners, is move, just move there. What I mean by that is, you know, when you when you think about immersion learning, now is the time when immersion learning really actually does exactly what you think it's going to do. And you really, you know, like at the point where you, you're not, your brain is not so overwhelmed where you just switch off when people talk at you in their target language, but instead it's just a bit of hard work. This is when as much interaction you with the target language is going to be as beneficial as it possibly can be. If you can't move there, I understand no, not everybody can move there. Here are some other ideas of, you know, in my life, what has really helped me. Um, okay, with English, I did move there. Um, but also I attended a course where English native speakers were kind of interacting with me all the time. In French, what really, really raised my level was translating. Um, I did the secretary course and I spoke a lot of French, but I felt that particularly my my grammar, my 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 complete grasp of the intricacies of French just got so much better because I was forced to translate pages and pages and pages every single week, uh, right? So I was I was doing a lot. So translate, I think, is I have such respect for translators. I have got a translation masters, and I don't work as a translator, you know, because it's hard and it's you have to be so on the detail like i it's 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 for people who love detail and i think at this stage you are a learner who should love the detail of your target language you know that's what's going to make you so much better um and tip number three is to work in that target language right so if you can't move there maybe you can get a job in a, a contact center maybe you can volunteer with a community around you i know it's not always easy but i tell you now if i get a job where i'm forced to speak welsh for two hours a week my welsh is going to improve at levels that you cannot imagine so you must at this stage force interaction so remember target you know focus on specific areas that you can improve step by step by step puzzle pieces now um, number two culture you know really think about what makes that language that language and number three move um, and by that mean I mean move there if you can and if not force force yourself to like get to levels of speaking with lots of different people that's the other thing like you're not if you have one language tutor eventually you just know that person's way of expressing themselves so well and you just get so tuned in and they get used to the mistake you make so they just start ignoring your core mistakes um at that point you're not improving anymore so you really have to speak to lots of different you need the variety as well okay now a few tips in terms of um what's going to make you feel great and awesome and you know what's what feels good at these levels is number one uh, we often feel that progress isn't so fast anymore when we are learning languages at intermediate levels and, and wanting to get to advanced levels. And that, I don't know if that's true. I think it's it's true that we're feeling that way. I don't know if it's true that it really is that way. I hope not. I kind of ignore it. I try. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so if progress feels slow and you're you're missing that joy of the, the thrill of the gratification that you get from the first five, eight, nine weeks of learning a language, take on another language, right? Don't give yours up. Don't give up big, big language, but, you know, take on a play language and just mess around because that's really fun. It can be very encouraging. And you'll also start realizing that the way you're thinking about language in total is changing completely. Number two, and this, I, I believe this, reduce the time that you spend on apps, right? Because apps, tend to be designed for the lower levels um, and instead really focus on that targeted training. I think this is a great time to take on a tutor. It's a great time to imagine preparing for a test. So something like something like this book is great. This is the 
uh, German version. It's, it's a book that is all about prepping you for the C1 good certificate. And if you're, it's got in it, um, obviously descriptions of the exam, you know, your, your mileage may vary. Um, but then it's got in like a simulated exam. Uh, it's got a practice program and it just tells you what is expected from you at those stages so that you, if you're feeling like you really want to know, am I good enough? Am I there? Um, something like this, super useful, highly recommended. Um, so, and, and, you know, you can work through this with a tutor and get them to, you know, mock exam you to correct your writing, etc. This is really, this is really useful and important stuff at that stage. Um, number three, recognize that unless you are really training for an exam, unless you are on a deadline, remember, realize that you're not on a deadline. So this is a long game and you're only getting better. You're only getting better. Um, if you're feeling rubbish, this is something that in the language habit toolkit is built in. Um, if you're feeling rubbish, uh, go back and do something that you did a year ago. Uh, or, or even, you know, if you're an intense student, do go back and do something that you did four months ago and you'll realize quickly how much better you are getting. Um, and number four, eliminate, as you are practicing, eliminate your native language as much as possible. Um, okay, so in conclusion, I think you you cannot reach a level like native or near native without doing an incredible amount of work. Um, you can get to native level speaking in a language, um, which if you're not taking an exam might be just all that you're after. Um, I don't advise it, as you know, I, I think writing is just as important and being able to you know read and communicate at all levels to a high standard in my mind is important. Um, but so after all, so all in all, what I'm saying is you have to do a lot of work for this. But at this stage, you're used to the core skills, you're used to vocab, you're used to grammar, you kind of know what you're doing. So it's a case of just challenge yourself more and start interacting with texts and spoken language much more intensively. Really challenge yourself. And I've got three tools that I wanted to recommend to you. I'm just going to put them over there. Um, number one, you want to have a, a, a topical vocab, vocab directory. I think these are really good. You can obviously find memorized courses on specific topics. Um, I'm old school, as we know, so I use this, Moe Kontext. Uh, it's a, another book in German. Um, and this is an Oberstufen Wortschatz. So it is the um, the dictionary or the, the vocabulary for the Oberstufe. So for what in America is high school and in Germany is Oberstufe and in English. England is um, college. I would say so like a level so this is pre-university vocabulary but germany is tough so they expect a lot uh, atmospheric pollution um the third sector the second sector lots of economy um politics unemployment um homelessness the constitution history so like i said before this is about way more than just like technical language skills this is about who you're talking to when you're talking to a French person. Um, really, really helpful to have something like this. So Moi Context is one um, brand that does it. Um, internationally, there's also something called More à More, or word for word, or word for word. I've seen it in several languages. Uh, it's really, really good. So get yourself a thematic um, vocabulary. But really, don't just don't just learn a word like constitution, right? Look up what the constitution is, for example, in in that country, because that influences who you're talking to. You gotta go deep, gotta go deep. Um, tool number two, writing and corrections, right? So write more, translate, summarize news articles. So annoying, so much hard work. So you know it's working. <laughs> Um, you know, like, like write more and get corrections, read through your corrections and rewrite. I wrote about this in, um, in this as well, in Influence Made Achievable, which is, um, you can get on Amazon. Um, sometimes I feel a bit like RuPaul um, in terms of plugging, um, but really, really useful stuff. So, um, write and get corrections, you know, you can get this from a tutor at this stage. I love the writing because at any stage of life, I love making students write because writing 
shows up your mistakes in a way that speaking doesn't. In speaking, you can get away with so much more. So you you got to write in order to really know where you're at. You know, like writing is, is like a mirror. It's honest. It's nice. Um, and finally, um, just on the cultural and the higher levels of reading, you do want to get more natural input. So for, for natural input on listening, I'm not even, I don't have to tell you, get podcasts, go on YouTube. This is easy. You know, where the internet is full of this stuff. For writing, I would advise try uh, the website onlinenewspapers.com where you can get newspapers in pretty much any language from anywhere. It's a very uh, rich website. Um, or just look for blogs in your target language. So again, we're talking about that focused vocab. But I think again, to really get to a level where you like C2 or like a level five on the FSI where you are more than just functional, you are native like assimilated. I think you need to know what's what's going on in that target country. You need to understand it. Okay, so those are my tips for advanced language learners. Uh, it's been a little bit quiet in the comments today. So if you're watching this after I've been live, I'd, I'd love to hear a comment from you. And as always, I'm going to put some links in the um, in the comments as well for you. There's a podcast that I did with Gareth Popkins and Tristan Foy, both um, language learners who are studying at very high levels as well. And uh, Gareth is a kind of a regular at the polyglot gathering, etc. He's such a, and he's helping me with my Welsh. So really a person to consider. I think he knows a lot about languages. And these two were a great resource. It's a really good podcast episode. And I'm going to put it in the comments for you to enjoy. Would love for you to check it out. Any more questions? As always, I'm here. Bye.